Filled with coral reefs gleaming in the sunlight, the sea of subtropical Okinawa serves as a habitat for a variety of creatures. The sea is a precious resource for we humans for fishing and swimming. However, the sea, which is such a familiar part of our life, can also be dangerous because it is home to many poisonous creatures that may sting or bite us. These creatures are not poisonous so that they can attack us, but in order to feed or to protect themselves. So the best way for us to avoid unnecessary injuries is to understand these creatures better and pay careful attention to them. Now let's check out the dangerous sea creatures so that we can fully enjoy the sea. First, let's look at a graph to see what kind of injuries can occur. More than half are caused by cnidarians, such as jellyfish and corals, followed by injuries caused by fish, such as stonefish, as well as sea urchins and starfish. There are also a few injuries caused by sea snakes and cone snails. Cnidarians include jellyfish, sea anemones and corals. In Okinawa, a type of large jellyfish called the box jellyfish causes many injuries. Other dangerous creatures include the Portuguese man-of-war and sea wasp anemones. Let's take a look at the box jellyfish. They're semi-transparent, so it's very difficult to see them in the water. As many as seven string-like tentacles resembling white jelly trail out from each of the four corners of the bell. The tentacles are what they use to sting. When the jellyfish grow bigger, their bells become more than 10 centimeters in height and their tentacles almost two meters long. Let's enlarge a tentacle to see how they sting. We can see many long, thin, capsule-like items called nematocysts. Inside each nematocyst are several threads and venom. When the jellyfish is stimulated, it discharges the threads like this, and they inject venom into its victim. Let's look at the moment of discharge. When stimulated with alcohol, the jellyfish instantly discharges its threads. Now let's observe how box jellyfish use their tentacles to catch fish. The moment a fish comes in contact with them, the nematocysts are discharged and the tentacles wrap round the fish to prevent it from escaping. More nematocysts are then discharged into the fish to paralyze it. As soon as it stops moving, it's swallowed and digested. Of course, box jellyfish start life as babies. At ports around the main island of Okinawa, when a light is turned on, many tiny box jellyfish gather around it. At this stage, they eat tiny plankton. Research by the Okinawa Prefectural Institute of Public Health and Environmental Science show that the bells of young jellyfish are about one centimeter in height around June, but grow to more than 10 centimeters by late July as the jellyfish consume more food. Around the Miyako and Yayama Islands, this happens about one month earlier. This graph shows the number of people stung by box jellyfish. There are so many cases because the season when the large box jellyfish appear overlaps with the peak swimming season.
So where are the safe places to swim? Did you know there are many beaches which have a protective jellyfish net? These nets are designed to protect us from jellyfish when we want to swim in the sea. To ensure we can enjoy swimming safely, lifeguards carry out a strict inspection every day to see whether any jellyfish have intruded the net. However, many people go swimming at beaches where there is no net. What could happen in this kind of place? This girl was apparently stung by a box jellyfish. Luckily, there was a lifeguard nearby who could administer first aid. She has red welts where she was touched by jellyfish tentacles. One week later, the scars are still visible. Depending on the person, the scars may remain for several years. When you go swimming where there is no jellyfish net, or when observing sea creatures in a coral reef area, wearing a wetsuit is the best idea. These days, thin, well-ventilated suits for summer use are sold to avoid jellyfish and coral stings. If a wetsuit is not available, you can wear a long sleeve t-shirt and leggings instead. Felt-soled shoes are recommended to protect your feet even if you tread on a stonefish. To cover your skin as much as possible, it's advisable to wear gloves as well. Now that you're ready, let's head out into the coral sea. There's something that looks like a beautiful piece of blue glass in the shallow water. What is it? This is a Portuguese man of war, which resembles a jellyfish. In a typhoon or strong winds, they sometimes get washed ashore. If you look carefully, you may find one floating at the water's edge. The long string-like tentacles trailing under the blue float can sting you, so never touch one. Just observe it. When you go into the sea, first pay attention to your feet, because you may come across a stonefish. This is a stonefish that looks just like a rock. They often stay motionless and sometimes even hide in the sand. It's easy to tread on one by mistake and get stung. Stonefish have venom in their dorsal fin spines, which are so hard they can penetrate through beach sandals or the soles of sports shoes. Even adults cry out with pain when they're stung, but it's safe if you're wearing felt sole shoes. Now let's enter the sea, keeping a careful watch. This pretty fish is in fact a type of lionfish. It looks as if you could easily catch it as it leisurely swims along. But hold on. It has venom in its dorsal, ventral and anal fins, so don't do anything besides watching it. This is a school of striped eel catfish with long whiskers like regular catfish. 
They have highly venomous spines in their dorsal and pectoral fins, so please be careful. You'll get stung if you push your hand into the school. Oh, look, there's a small pile of coral fragments in a strange shape. Removing the coral, we find a round sea urchin hiding underneath. This is a flower urchin. Flower urchins don't have sharp spines, but sting with their flower-like appendages called pedicellariae. They sting when the pedicellariae close. In the shallow lagoon of a coral reef, you might find a sea wasp anemone, so please be very careful. This type of sea anemone that looks just like seaweed stuck on a rock is extremely poisonous. On its surface, there are many spherical nidocytes around one millimeter in diameter. They contain nematocysts, if you carelessly touch them, their venom is discharged and you will suffer severe pain. In sandy areas, you will often find a Hell's Fire Sea Anemone, which has a brownish fluffy appearance. When touched, it immediately disappears into the sand. This is its main characteristic. If we check the glove that touched it, we can see lots of poisonous barbs stuck to it. Please never do this. The crown of thorn starfish that is often found hiding underneath table coral or rocks is well known for eating coral. Its spines are poisonous. Long spine sea urchins are covered in very long, sharp, stinging spines. Between them can be seen bluish white dots. Place your hand or an object near one, and it will move its spines to protect itself. Look, there's a sea snake swimming by. Many species are harmless, but some are poisonous. Those that are quick-tempered or inquisitive may approach you, but do not attempt to play with or harass them. Quietly leave them alone. At night, some sea creatures different from those seen during the day become active. This predatory cone snail with a beautiful brownish shell is a geographic cone snail. Extending its long siphon like a trunk, it appears to be sniffing out its prey. Let's look at the moment when another type of cone snail, Conus textilia linnaeus, catches its prey. This cone snail eats shellfish. Can you see the long red tube-like proboscis protruding from its mouth under the siphon? From it, it discharges a harpoon-like dart containing venom, the white substance you can see here. The shellfish is paralyzed as it desperately tries to escape and eventually stops moving. The snail then slowly swallows it. This small octopus is a species of blue-ringed octopus. These octopuses are usually very pale in colour, but their round patterns turn bright blue when they are provoked. In other countries, people have died after being bitten when they carelessly put a blue-ringed octopus on their shoulders for fun because they looked so cute. 
The bite comes from the mouth hidden between the arms. Please just observe them quietly and don't touch them. Now we'd like to introduce first aid procedures following injuries caused by sea creatures. If you are stung by something in the sea, stay calm. Immediately get out of the water and call for help. When you are stung, try and identify what creature has attacked you. If someone who has been injured stops breathing or their heart stops, those around them should administer CPR immediately. In the case of box jellyfish stings, don't rub with sand, but apply plenty of vinegar. Gently remove any attached tentacles. The pain can be relieved with an ice pack. Box jellyfish tentacles contain many nematocysts. Some of the attached tentacles may still contain a lot of nematocysts which have not been discharged. If you rub them, the nematocysts may be discharged, increasing the injury. Vinegar is effective in stopping the nematocysts and preventing spread of the venom. When stung by a Portuguese man of war, a sea wasp anemone or coral, you should wash off any tentacles or spherical packets of nematocysts with seawater. Using vinegar will only spread the injury more, so please avoid it. After washing off, you should cool the area with ice. This girl was stung on her hand and knee by a sea wasp anemone. She has been in hospital for about a week and has just been released. Besides causing strong pain and swelling, your kidneys can be affected. So if you are stung by an anemone, please go to a hospital without fail. If you are stung by a fish, such as a stonefish, or creatures with spines, like sea urchins and starfish, you should use hot water. Remove any visible spines and warm the injured part using hot water at a temperature of around 40 to 45 degrees Celsius for about 60 to 90 minutes. This will reduce the pain. You might have spines remaining in your body, so you should also see a doctor. Following an injury caused by a sea snake or a cone shell, call for an ambulance immediately and go to a hospital. Sea snake and cone shell injuries aren't very visible and there may not be much pain either, so it's easy to think there is no problem. However, their poison contains a neurotoxin which can eventually cause paralysis and make you unable to move or breathe. Take the same action if you're injured by a blue ringed octopus. Call for an ambulance right away and go to a hospital. The octopus venom is the same as that of a puffer fish, so do not let it get into your mouth. First aid procedures vary depending on the creature that caused the injury. Please make sure to remember them and make the best use of them if anything should happen. If you suffer serious injuries or feel intense pain, go to a hospital immediately.
The sea is a cradle of life. Many creatures live by reaping its benefits. Some of them are poisonous and can be dangerous to humans. However, for those creatures, poison is what they need to survive. Now, making the best use of what you've learned, please enjoy the beautiful Sea of Okinawa. Its coral reefs and sunny beaches are waiting for you. <laughs>